Continuing on with the Fairway Bandits Disc Golf 101 video series, this is episode 16 where we start to talk tournaments. This is going to be an overview of the primary categories of tournaments and types. We'll break them down a little bit deeper in future videos. So, the two primary categories of tournaments would be sanctioned and unsanctioned. Sanctioned being events that are registered, governed, and approved by the PDGA. And unsanctioned would be basically everything else. Now, typically you'd spell unsanctioned with an N, but apparently I've gone and done that wrong here. So um, these are going to be mostly your local tournaments that you're referred to usually as a mini. So moving on to discuss the sanctioned events, there are basically seven types. You've got the PDGA Majors, the National Tour, A, B, C, and X tier, as well as the League. Now these tournaments get bigger and better as you move up the list. The rules of play don't change, but what's expected from the TDs does. If you want to see a complete breakdown, go to pdga.com. We're going to get rid of the first two right off the bat, because if you're looking or concerned about playing in these, you probably don't even need to watch this video and get rid of the X tier, because there's fewer of those, and they can morph a little bit. All right, so... Starting off with the A tier, you do need to have a PDGA membership for these. They usually run two to three days, and you need a minimum of 54 holes played during that tournament to be um, an A tier. B tier, kind of the middle ground one here. Um, you don't have to have a PDGA membership for this. You can just sign up and register as everybody else. Typically, you got to pay a little bit more if you don't, but these will last one to three days with a minimum of 36 holes. And then your C tier, which is going to be your smallest of the three tiers, um, that one also doesn't require a PDGA membership. One to two days, a minimum of 18 holes. Now, the C tier and the league are probably what you're going to start out playing when it's the sanctioned events, uh, the league being the smallest of the the smallest of those, uh, which is typically your, your normal weekly minis that's just been registered with the PDGA. So these can actually count towards your, your ratings. They run six to 10 weeks and there's various formats available depending on what your tournament director decides. So let's talk some benefits to playing in a sanctioned event. Number one would be structure. Now this is my favorite because it's organized. The tournament directors are required to have certain guidelines with each tier of tournament. These tournaments do count towards your player ratings and accumulate points on your PDGA profile. And the payout is typically a little bit better because uh, your registration cost is higher. It typically draws in more players from the surrounding area than your minis. Uh, so moving on to the unsanctioned events. This is going to be all the other tournaments uh, and typically run by... i got to stop saying typically run by your local disc golf clubs, local businesses, or just individuals. Primary focus of these is usually fundraising, either for the disc golf club or a local charity. And since it is unsanctioned, these local events can change up as far as format goes. Singles, doubles, teams, that kind of thing, um, based on your tournament director. Benefits to playing in an unsanctioned event. Number one is the social networking side. You just get to meet a lot of great people in the disc golf community. Uh, there's a lot less stress in it because you don't have ratings and points involved, so you don't have to have a bad round going on your permanent record. It's really good practice for those rated rounds, and the cost is typically lower. And a portion of that cost goes back in to fund your local community, whether it be a charity or a local disc golf club. If you can, that's the important thing about these minis, is it does support uh, the promotion, building, and maintaining of disc golf in your area. Locally, we've got the TDSA, Tulsa Disc Sports Association, which is comprised of some very dedicated, hardworking volunteers responsible for giving us some of the awesome courses that we have. If you haven't been to TulsaDiscSportsAssociation.com, get out there, get a membership, keep disc golf growing here in Oklahoma. All right, so that concludes episode 16. Next one, episode 17, is going to be a tournament breakdown. We're going to dig in just a little bit deeper into those tournament types and take a look at what you might expect on a typical tournament day. Until then, keep chucking plastic.